episode 118. My name is Dave, and I'm joined by Michael Swift. How's it going, Dave? How's it going? I think, I don't know if I complained last year, uh, or last week, on air about my hair, but I got a haircut. You still didn't notice. Every time I get a haircut, you never notice, Sorry. Dave. I, I don't, I, I can't notice. keep up with, uh, uh, you know, the... Angela, how do you I can't keep this? up with three kids, my wife and you, okay? <laughs> I'm your problem too, man. Come on. We're business partners. For the record, it's a little bit too dark to see your hair. Like, you kind of just blend into the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, 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 we're recording later than usual. With everything so you're wearing, you're just options. a floating head on the stream. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me, uh, I, I can adjust this. I can adjust this. All right. So, uh, speaking of the, <laughs> speaking the, of the stream, uh, we are live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash digital days gaming, where you can watch us live at random times lately when we record because both of our schedules are ki- a little chaotic right now. Um, and you can also subscribe to there if you have, uh, if you want to use one a Twitch subscription, or if you link it with your Amazon account, uh, you can sc- subscribe with Twitch Prime. You do have to check that every thirty days, or however often you are or aren't on Twitch. So even if we're not live and you're listening to this, you can go to our channel and hit subscribe. We don't we don't have to be live, so that's always super helpful. Um, as well as just subscribing to the podcast in general on whatever podcast services you're currently listening to us on. Uh, I think we've had some new listeners or some influx in the numbers last couple weeks of talking about the Bungie acquisition and the uh, Activision Blizzard thing. So we've definitely hit some people's uh, in you know like uh, feeds or you know you know maybe we're showing up on some more searches. But uh, leaving a review is super helpful. Uh, going to the website and subscribing that way helps us also uh, if you aren't or if you aren't subscribed already. And then leaving a review. Uh, preferably with words uh spotify allows you to word uh to, to word reviews to leave reviews um but i think you can only give it ratings i don't think you can write anything um and i think you can actually rate individual episodes so i think so but the overall one is the one that right. you want to to do um, and then if it, if if you don't listen to spot if you don't use spotify to listen to podcasts but you use it to listen to music just search us on there and fast forward through the episode and then review it <laughs> yeah which is funny because like spotify does yeah. make sure it's like you have not right. listened to this episode yeah. or the so show before before you click it which episode, is nice fast forward on your screen and leave a review if you can that'd be helpful so all right uh we're going to throw it over to some news yeah not a ton of news over the last uh, week or so but some stuff uh is starting to roll uh, we're in the middle of like video game release season now like the the spring releases horizon hits this week uh, we're like two weeks away from uh, Elden Ring, so we, we have a bunch of stuff coming out. Uh, but that means we also have announcements coming shortly because we have no idea what the rest of the year looks like. Uh, so Capcom has begun a count, uh, countdown website. So they started a, a website with a countdown that ends on February 20th. This happens to be the same day the Street Fighter Pro Tour season finale happens. So a lot of people are speculating that this is going to be Street Fighter Street Fighter 6. Uh, for some some anyone wants to know, Street Fighter 6 came out in 2016. 5. Or Street Fighter 5 came out in 2016 and the last character that was released was in November 2021. So they supported that for quite a while. Uh Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite released in 2017 that did not have that long of a tail for downloadable content. So those are probably the two guesses you would probably make at this, but Street Fighter 6 probably makes i don't think it's six i think it's going to be like street fighter 5 like turbo championship edition or something they already did like four of those um so i think that they're they're tapped out the main reason i don't think it's six um i mean based i I wasn't aware of like all the anniversaries and stuff that you just put in the in the thing which is a very compelling information um but five was heavily heavily produced uh or uh or paid for by sony um and so i don't know if if they can like i understand that maybe their financial situation since 2016 has changed like you mentioned last week like the success of monster hunter and success of the resident evil franchises even the remakes of doing very 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 well to maybe where they can uh do a street fighter without playstation um but i i don't i don't know like if if there's even a place for six because i feel like the five did well but not as it did not hit the casual audience like they wanted it to my understanding of it so yeah it it, it lagged behind yeah. four in terms of sales it was the second best selling right. street fighter series of all time but second behind street fighter which is super fascinating uh, since four. it was really only on playstation and pc right yeah and it had a really rough 
start. Yeah. Like it wasn't until like they got into season one, season two that it kind mm-hmm. of found its footing. So it, they have reason to to move on, right? I, and that's why I, th- I I just don't know if like this would. It's kind of the same way I feel about Mortal Kombat. Like, what else can you do, like to a fighting game? You know. Well, yeah, especially the the Street Fighter Five had the most mm-hmm. characters, I believe that they've had. That's why I put the in the, our notes. I put the Marvel versus Capcom thing because I think that's always a possibility, especially infinite did yeah. not. I, do I guess well. I would lean more towards uh, that way. Just be just riding the success of essentially making these characters look like the MCU characters, like the movie characters, you know? Yeah. And then especially at the time, a thing that like hurt infinite is they were working directly with Disney. So they had to drop all of the, uh, Fox owned characters and they, they couldn't do the X-Men. I believe, maybe one or two X-Men ended up making into through right. the DLC, but at launch it had the smallest roster compared to previous games, especially three ultimate. So I would imagine Capcom wouldn't mind taking another shot at Marvel versus Capcom, especially now that they would be working with Disney who now owns right. all of the Marvel properties. Uh, it would make their life so much easier and people would probably be excited. And I'm sure they would want to get away from, the stank that infinite <laughs> kind of left on yeah. the franchise. I, Cause I, I almost feel like right now, if you were going to do something as crazy as it sounds like a new street fighter would almost have to be free to play. Right. I, I, I was yeah. thinking that too. I was wondering like, do you go to the free to play route and, and just suck see what happens? Turn up dry. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. And, and then just hope that because Sony bought mm-hmm. Evo, they're going to like really do something big with Evo now that you can get away with like, okay, Sony's going to put a bigger investment in Evo, make it more of a, a name household brand. Maybe we do free to play to coincide with that. And then just get as many be, people in as possible. Xbox, right? Yeah. I think so. I, I, they, they've done too well with like monster hunter and resident evil to take a step back unless Sony jumps in and is like, Hey, we own Evo. We yeah, really want to, the only, the, the only thing that happen. I would see is like, and we just had one, but the only thing that I would see like that would make me go, hmm, is if for some reason we hear about a state of play on the 20th to where like the state of play goes live, very similar to when this countdown timer ends. Like if those two things happen to correspond with each other, because we typically don't, what do we know about like four days sometimes for state of plays? Like we hear about them on Monday and they're usually like on a Thursday. Yeah, and this is a Sunday, oh, I think. So yeah. it wouldn't be surprising if they do the announcement on a Sunday and or say find out more information okay. at yeah, a state of play yeah, the valid. following. Yeah, Wednesday. I just don't know if Sony would let so Capcom have this have the first say. You know, if they're if they're I think footing they a bill would because it's yeah. at a tournament. Okay. It, and and the Evo yeah. acquisition last year or two they years ago five at a PlayStation experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah which obviously would be ideal if they right. still did playstation experiences uh because uh, the tournament would actually it wouldn't conclude but it'd be like the semifinals took place at i think, I think it concluded PlayStation like experience. It ended sunday night it was going on like the whole weekend like the one or two that i went to so yeah i, I just don't know what part yeah, of the yeah, tournament yeah. it was uh in terms of i think it was like a semifinal for the the pro cup uh so i i'm kind of leaning towards maybe like a marvel versus capcom but i wouldn't be surprised if it is street fighter to your point if they want to take a little bit longer a break between street fighter maybe they finally are like hey here's dark stalkers here's some of our other fighting games that people really mm-hmm. want that we can put out and doesn't require a huge right. budget because uh, i don't think you can get away with because they already technically re-released or remastered four uh right before they did five which was a confusing thing because i think they did four on ps4 and then shortly after that that's when they brought out five and people were like well i'm just going to keep playing yeah. four so depending on how they want to do but because of the you know i would imagine evo will probably be back in person this year yeah i would like we might be at that point with some ca- with, with some caveats be, but yeah i could see it being in person for sure yeah with some caveats but because it's the first in person one in two years might be worth them being like new street fighter let's yeah. go big uh, for yeah, the I mean, big in person when the energy is going to be there it, it, so watch there, it there's be a like- chance something completely like off the hilter that we don't even know about <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it, well that's why i'm hoping like that this if it happens to be one of their like smaller fighting franchises that would be really cool but watch it's just uh here's season yeah. six of dlc characters yeah. for five 
So uh, we'll find out. Luckily, we won't have to wait too long because it is on the 20th, which I believe yeah. is a Sunday. Uh, other news, Cap uh, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, released at the PS5 and Xbox Series X for, today. For free. Uh, like they, for free. So um, smart delivery takes care of it over on Xbox. PlayStation is kind of a shit show as usual. Every time there's one of these upgrades, it's always like, chaotic of like it's not working for me i know for me earlier like they said just check your library it'll be there it's not there for me (laughs) put the disc in reinstalled it still don't have the option seems like that's something that they'll probably fix within the next day or two but every time it happens super super annoying uh this is the the new next gen current gen whatever whatever you want to call it it's going to have two modes performance mode which is going to be 60 frames and 4k and then there's a ray tracing tracing mode which is going to be locked at 30 frames with 4k and obviously ray tracing and then there's other improvements and fixes you might want to look at the patch notes because there's a ton of stuff because they are still fixing this game like that this game is still in the process of being fixed it just now has more platforms to be on so we'll see how digital foundry breaks it down within the next like couple days uh, but they they've improved the crowd stuff because at one point they had to basically patch the game to where there's not many pedestrians, there's not much crowding happening to where the game kind of looked like a ghost town, but it sounds like they implemented groups and crowds and pedestrians again for this. So we'll see how this all ends up shaking out. this game out. didn't run well on PC either, right? Um, it, it, have, it, it ran well enough, but it was still buggy and it still had foundational issues with it you know like the cops mm. ai was still really bad they would despawn behind you uh there's a lot of s- fundamental issues with this game that they're still trying to fix because uh they're calling this the 1.5 patch and they got the 1.5 patch on pc as well so it like they're still fixing things they just have more platforms is this gonna make you play it no because like <sighs> So I didn't have the worst experience when I was playing it on PS4, but nothing in the world grabbed me. Like, it all just kind of seemed generic. And then until they fix, like, some of the AI issues, I, I don't want to play, like, a, a lackluster yeah, game, I, I was unfortunately. Like, I saw some stuff on social media today, and I was like, I wonder if this game's still, like, 10 bucks physically, because I have a physical Xbox now. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> <laughs> but... It is on sale for $24, uh, mm-hmm. right now uh the ps4 and xbox one uh version of the game which in theory you should be able to be able to easily digitally upgrade that but again if you're on playstation you might have to wait for them to fix whatever bugs they have look, with look at how much issuing it is it, like, licenses <laughs> yeah i think it was like ten dollars yeah, like two weeks so. ago so i think you'll be you'll be fine finding that or a used copy without any issues uh i i have it on disc so i i will once it issues the game to me, I yeah. might start a character I guess, again. Like, I, maybe I'm with you but though. I, like, like, tell me when 2.0 is ready, and then I'll talk. Then we could talk about it. Like 1.5 is not enough, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially uh, we saw the roadmap. We know there's patches coming, and then it sounds like there's probably going to be a whole new set of issues that they're going to have to fix on these new platforms. This is just like I feel like so, this is just uh, a formality for them, though. They got to release this. They've got to release because I think they said they're doing a Witcher thing, like something similar with The Witcher. Yeah, they are. And then like that's be, like they got to get those two things out the door before they even like utter the words multiplayer. <laughs> like, yeah, which I think I feel like they like kind of canceled the multiplayer thing, or at least tying it to this specific mm-hmm. game. Like oh the, yeah, it's gonna be its own yeah, standalone thing. Something, you know, colon something. Yeah, be the multiplayer right. mode, and then that at this point in time should probably be free to play, and then cosmetic the hell out of it. You know, if you want to try to like rebuild this brand or franchise at all. I just the shooting in this game was really bad, <laughs> so like the idea that they're making a multiplayer mm-hmm. uh, of this is I'm just like I, I don't well, see this how that's always gonna end up working out that for we've them. Had. Like like you know years ago when you and I were talking about this, I was like, look, I've never played The Witcher. But can Cyber Tongue, Cyber, or um, I'm sorry, can uh, CD Projekt Red do a first person shooter? And the answer right now is no. <laughs> was, <laughs> like, yeah, it, like it, it's the game moves like a PS3 era game uh, for like how first person shooter feel was in that generation. And there's just too many good first person games. Uh, there's too many good first person RPGs. Yeah. There's some people uh, on our Facebook group that are pretty excited about this, though. So. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, this, this definitely will have its fans. I just don't, I just, I don't know if I'm willing to invest in this game, especially after everything that I did play, like, probably yeah. like 10, You're talking 12 about invest hours. more time, not necessarily more money, but just time. Yeah. Yeah, just time, because there's so much stuff to play uh, that uh, I'm just... Yeah, Don't so see I'm it. glad they're getting it out, and I'm glad they didn't fumble. I mean, like, like some, um, systematically they fumbled the release, but I'm glad they didn't say, it's $20. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this next bit is uh, Microsoft. Uh, they have claimed that they will release Activision Blizzard games for PlayStation, specifically Call of Duty and other major titles, through their current agreements with PlayStation and beyond. So Brad Smith took to like the Xbox uh, Newswire or Microsoft's blog specifically and made this proclamation that PlayStation fans do not have to worry about losing Call of Duty or other major franchises, which I guess makes sense for the term point of like, this is still a franchise that produces billions of dollars. So they probably don't want to lose that. Also, they need to say whatever they need to do. They need to say everything nice they can say while being investigated and <laughs> looked at by the FTC. So this yeah, makes sense. I think this from is that. them playing nice and, and saying they're going to do ABC and they'll do ABC for a couple of years, whether it's 2026, 2027. And then I think you'll slowly start to see them try to like, see what we can get away with like that's let's 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 release this next game maybe it won't be a big game and like let's just see what happens if we don't release it on playstation let's see what the outcry is oh it was really quiet you know because you know maybe it like like we've talked about and i keep saying and i've said it too on social media as well as like they can argue eventually over time that if and when this game pass app becomes a thing that works on fire sticks and, and apple tv and all that stuff like it's more accessible than ever like you don't have to even have a console so, like, I think that they can try to, like, pitch it that way. Um, but I don't know. Like, it's it's so it's so weird because of what Xbox is trying to do of, like, you know, like, it, does this mean that, like, um, World of Warcraft is... They make that, right? Yeah. World of Warcraft is, is coming to console. Yeah. And a couple of people that I've talked to are like, it, can, it, can a console run it? Yeah. Can a player play it with a controller? No. You know, like, so, yeah. Um, and then it's like, oh, well, you know, like, just, you know, like, Xbox can support keyboard and mouse. Yeah, but, like, the primary player that plays an Xbox console is sitting on the couch with a controller, obviously. Well, I, like, anytime they bring up World of Warcraft, I just feel like that, especially if they bring current World of Warcraft, I think it's just, mm -hmm. there's no point to ever bring that to consoles. Like, it's already there. It's not dying, but it's kind yeah. of coasting probably forever uh but this makes sense in terms of like overwatch mm -hmm. 2 is something overwatch has been kind of beaten down really bad right now and it would probably hurt to exclude playstation from that you know player base because you want that game to be as successful as possible so you're going to want the biggest player base you can have have access to that mm -hmm. game so it, this totally makes sense from Microsoft's perspective to continue those games. But to your point, uh, what, what you said where you think they're going to experiment eventually with like, well, let's try this game. I think they're going to mm -hmm. do that right away. Where like, yes, the big games, Call of Duty, Overwatch, they will come to PlayStation for forever. But if they bring back Singularity right. or something, those will just be Xbox exclusive. I also exclusive. think that Microsoft will stop the annualization of Call of Duty. Yeah, I, I could totally so see that you might too. Only get especially a, you might once get a the new title of Call of Duty, like every three years, and they'll like, and then they'll just keep, mm -hmm. they'll do what what has worked already. It, we we've seen it work. Modern Warfare multiplayer was fantastic. The seasonal content people were engaging with, and then Cold War came out, and it's like, okay, how do you run them both at the same time? And Warzone. So I can see, like, obviously, we already like we said it before, like Warzone will be on everything possible because it's free to play, and they want the the engagement player base, um, but. Call of Duty colon Cold War 2 might not be coming until 2028, and you might not see a Call of Duty game for a while, but they could take Treyarch and say, okay, make a shooter of this, and then, like, oh, this feels like Call of Duty, but it's not. It's 
alien you know it's it's crossfire x2 like i don't even know you know like it's it's mm-hmm. something entirely new or different um that a, a new ip that they're doing or re- resurrecting an older one that's you know like a I, I I can't think of anything right now as an example of something from Microsoft, you know, like from five, six, seven years ago or whatever. But you know, like maybe they get them. Like, oh, like what would you? What would a non Call of Duty game look like to Treyarch if they go to Treyarch yeah. and say, "Hey, let's see what you guys got going on." Like we've always talked about, like a space shooter, like you know, or something like that. Like, yeah. and that's the the stuff like, that hey. could not be on PlayStation. Sure, Call of Duty that comes out yeah. every three years. Yeah, whatever you can have it. You know. If they decide to give Quake mm-hmm. another go and they give it to a Call of Duty studio, you can say Quake isn't that big of a franchise, so you can get away yeah. with making it Xbox exclusive. And the acquisition still works out for Microsoft because having a Call of Duty games day one on Game Pass is still a hell of a proposition yeah. to put to the, yeah, the fan Blizzard, base. The Blizzard and company I think is PC. That's, so like... <laughs> Yeah, it, it's PC outside of like Overwatch, which is still their primary console mm-hmm. is PC or pri- primary platform is PC. So I, I totally understand why Microsoft will keep Call of Duty on there just because it looks good. And also they need to they need to seem like the, yeah. the good guy in terms of not seeming like right. a monopoly because they can't go into the hearings and be like, so you're going to take the number one and two best selling games, you know, because yeah. it's usually this year's Call of Duty right. and last year's Call of Duty that are one and two and then on Warzone's PlayStation's high revenue, so. charts. Yeah, so they, they can't rip but that I've away. I've seen something similar to this. Um, I don't, whatever, I've been gone for like 15 years or 12 or 13 years, so I, I'm sure that this is not like surprising. So uh, most of you know that I worked for Foot Locker um, for, prior to my, my previous job, um, and Foot Locker purchased a company called Foot Action, uh, who is another shoe store. Um, and initially, when they were going to go purchase them, the court said, no, you can't, because uh, Foot Locker Incorporated owns Foot Locker Kids, Foot Locker Lady, Foot Locker Champs, and East Bay are all underneath the Foot Locker Incorporated umbrella at that time. Um, the, the the court said, no, there you can't have this many things. And they're like, okay. So they waited, I don't remember how long it was, six months, 12 months, 18 months, as Foot Action was struggling as a company and was closing locations and got smaller and waited and purchased them when they were at a small enough number that the judge had told them like, no, you can't buy them until like this, this, or this. And then they purchased them at that number and then proceeded to open more stores. <laughs> so mm-hmm. like right now, it's like you said, they're trying to get this through the courts. Once it gets through the courts, yeah. like, yes, Phil Spencer has been very good about staying to his word and what he says publicly normally happens. Um, but this could be completely different once it's through the door. <laughs> yeah. They, they, it could go down as like, yeah, we'll release our annual call of duty game on PlayStation. And then it's like, well, now we're biannual. Yeah. So that doesn't count we're for what we previously the said. Call of duty. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't make sense financially. So there's ways that Microsoft can probably get around this, but in terms of same way where, you know, PlayStation acquired Bungie and they're going to like, let's just, let Bungie do Bungie things, and it's because it's just a revenue mm-hmm. that they can collect from and Bungie. It's a, it's so, a, at Call of Duty's the it's same. It's a way. win for Sony. It's win-win for Sony. Like with the Bungie thing, I think I said this before. I don't know if I said this on the show, but if Bungie fails at whatever they're making next, it's Bungie's fault because Sony's like, well, you have creative control. If Bungie succeeds, Sony's like, well, look, our money helped you succeed. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it comes. Yeah, it comes like, down to that. Yeah, it, it, they'll take credit yeah, when sure. they can. Uh, every mm-hmm. company's like that. Yeah, but uh, I guess if you're on PlayStation, you, you can rest easy knowing that the next couple of Call of Duties are going to be fine. And probably f- for a while, uh, Call of Duty will be coming. It's just when they decide to break the Call of Duty train up is when you probably have to worry because you might not have Infinity Ward working on all yeah, of the Call of Duty. Infinity Duties Ward, Sledgehammer, and Treyarch, now. right? And then Raven. But Raven's just mostly like auxiliary uh, maps and stuff, right? Th- I want to say they did the last, the, the okay. current one, okay. Vanguard. Uh, but it's so hard to tell with how they split mm-hmm. that stuff up. But they will probably not have all four of those studios consistently working on it. Toys for Bob is sure as hell get, probably going to get off Call of Duty <laughs> uh, when this deal is done. So a lot of things will change with that franchise that will affect what they are currently saying today about that franchise. 
Uh, finally, uh, the last bit of news that we have. Uh, Nintendo, they did a direct. We talked about them announcing a 40-minute direct that was focused on the first half of this year last week. So we will go over some of the highlights. I just put the, the basic mm-hmm. stuff here. Uh, so I'm just going to run through this list. Dave, stop me if you want to say something. Uh, Xenoblades Chronicles 3 uh, was announced and launches in September. Splatoon 3 will launch this summer. Nintendo Switch Sports announced and releasing April 29th. All sports will have online play. This is basically just a sequel to Wii Sports. I okay, want to talk yeah, about I was this. Say, like, <laughs> yeah, but you, go, does go this for appeal it. to you? Oh, for sure. Like, I don't know why. I, I loved Wii Sports, but like, as soon as I saw bowling, I was just like, yes, yeah. the bring me this with online this, play. This appeals to me because of Angela and Owen. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like being able to to play and and you know even my wife wasn't really paying attention to the direct but they either she was on social media later that night or she was like on something where like in, or she was reading an article about it and she's like they're doing Wii Sports with the Switch I go yeah she's like cool <laughs> you know like mm-hmm. um so if and it, and if this is remotely successful it, this is even like half as successful as Wii Sports like it's going to be absurd <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah the, the, I I can't wait for this especially when they showed bowling and then there was like oh there's gonna be all these people playing and it's just gonna be like a mm-hmm. survival of of like bowling. this is the stuff that brings that people to your house cool. that don't play games here check this out you know like and mm-hmm. you can you know like you bring somebody to the house and you can play it's not as it's not as like i don't feel it's gonna be as iconic just it's it, it can't be as iconic as the as the wiimote was at the time like yeah. you know like you, you put that on your coffee table and people are like oh you have a Wii. Like, you know like it's not like a like the switch isn't like that anymore at, at all um but i still think this is pretty cool yeah no th- th- this is going to be fantastic for for at least getting people together and playing these games that everyone can pick up the only one that looked dangerous is like the soccer one where you can put the uh switch controller on your leg and you have to do kicking motions that seems like that's a recipe for broken tvs again which i look forward to those youtube videos of people <laughs> oh, okay. michael you gotta launching move up in the world. i look forward to the tiktoks okay <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, digital days gaming actually has uh, nothing to TikTok. do with that but it would just be a tiktok <laughs> or something like that but <laughs> yeah uh but this was probably the thing that it's crazy this is probably the thing that got me the most excited like in terms of all the announcements that were done is a fucking Wii sports spiritual mm-hmm. successor which is i just didn't expect this to be a thing i wasn't sure if this uh, the, I, and again i didn't play skyward sword with the motion controls like in my mind i'm like can the switch really do this like is that is, is the is the mm-hmm. and then, yeah it, it can like i haven't you have ring oh. fit adventure which is probably the closest thing to this yeah 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 it, they, they are actually pretty mm-hmm. damn good i they might actually be better than the we just because yeah. technology's moved so much since then uh but yeah no it's definitely something that i didn't pop out of my head right away in terms of can it do this because i just don't use the 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 switch right like that you know i usually just have a controller just gonna in my make hand, joy-cons so there's a lot of each- sell faster because you need more <laughs> yep 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 and break faster uh other games announced it so this basically this whole direct outside of a few announcements was like hey this game's getting re-released on the switch so we have no man's sky That's coming to the cool. switch like it uh, looks cool like i don't yeah. i don't care for no man's sky like i've never played it but this is like the little engine that could and just keeps going and going and going <laughs> Yeah, and this is the full No Man's Sky experience, so all the the free expansions that they had released are going to be coming included with this. We got Portal 1 and 2 coming with, you know, uh, split-screen co-op. It's just kind of cool that, like, Valve is still porting Portal mm-hmm. to things. Uh, th- crazy one, Mario Kart 8 is getting DLC through 2023, uh, this expansion can be acquired by itself or through the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, and it will add 48 tracks to can the you game. you get Mario Kart 8 uh, with the expansion, or you only get the DLC? Like, do you get the you whole mean? game? Oh, no, so you... No, 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 so this is just the expansion. This does not include the previous season passes that they included. So this is a 48-track expansion that is being added to Mario Kart 8. So, if you're talking about the whole Mario Kart experience, you still need to buy the game, whatever season pass they release for it, and then the 48 track expansion pack that's, that's coming. A lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there, there, 
But this has at least come in part of that expansion pack, which this is the first time that I looked at the expansion pack uh, for Nintendo Switch Online, which is yeah. that $50 a year service where I was like, oh, maybe this maybe this is what finally gets me to go in there because N64 games definitely aren't right. doing that for me. Uh, the only downside is it looks like these tracks are actually ports from the mobile game. Uh, just kind of up on here but it makes sense in terms of the amount of tracks they're yeah, adding it's not that all they 48 would... tracks though they're bringing some of the ones from like n64 and double dash and stuff a lot a lot of those were already brought over to the mobile game uh, oh so i see what you're saying so they, that's how taking peop- the tracks from the yeah. mobile game and porting them to the switch not redoing them from yeah. the 64 and putting them in the switch okay there might be one or two since there's 48 mm-hmm. of them but the ones that they did show people compared them to the mobile game and were like, oh, those are totally just the tracks from the okay. mobile game up So that's the only kind of bummer uh, just because there's a uh, differences in those tracks and also just how they yeah. look this, seems like this is the a same slight thing downgrade. Like this game is, is, you know, obviously Mario Kart is Mario Kart and it's fun and it's great to play. Um, I, I don't own Mario Kart 8 on the Switch at all. Um, I would like to, again, to play with Ange, uh, and I, but I think Owen would get pissed. <laughs> yeah, at, at yeah. The, at Just the disable age blue that he is right now, can. I think he would be very, very upset. Um, so I need to track this game down. I think I may have given my copy to my little sister, so I might have to buy mm-hmm. a digital copy because hearing this announcement, I'm just like, you know what? That's a lot of tracks. I, I kind of yeah, the variety is always play great. Crazy in terms Mario of, like, Kart. People are like, oh, yeah. I don't want this track again. Like, if you got 48 tracks plus whatever's already in the game, like, that's got to be close to, like, what, 60 tracks? Um, It's probably yeah, around 70 that's, that's uh, at that point. That's appealing to me, like, going through, like, a, like a multiple different races without... And of course you'll be like, oh, we're not doing that track. We're not doing that track. But, you know, like, yeah, it could. That, that's a lot. <laughs> and then they're saying yeah. now, it's, I've read articles saying that nine is in development. Yeah, nine is in development. That'll probably be for a new platform just because like Mario Kart now after this track expansion thing happens, they're going to end up in the same spot that they are with smash brothers it's where they release the ultimate version of that there's no way they can top that until yeah. they're on a new platform like for, yeah and like there's for me gimmicks. like at this point in time like and i you know we talk about this with the confusion and the like the what tracks will be in part of the expansion pass and season pass like just make a hundred dollar version of this game that i can buy and not think about it anymore you know mm-hmm. that, that's basically what they're gonna have to do especially because you have like the I don't know how many seasons Mario Kart 8 ended up having, but I remember they eventually added, like, I think Zelda to it. So that there's a lot of stuff that you're going to have to pick up to yeah, have the just, full just Mario Kart make 8 a box experience. That says Mario Kart 8 Ultimate and let me buy it. Like, and not, and not have to worry yeah, about it. And, and that's probably what. Like. And that's probably what I would be most interested mm-hmm. in doing as well, uh, since I have to rebuy it. Uh, Metroid Dread got a free update that adds a rookie mode and a awesome, Dread I can mode. Play it now. So the rookie mode. No, I'm just doing. That. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, you did. That's how you got through Shut Horizon. Uh, so <laughs> the rookie mode is the easy mode, and then the hard mode, Dread, oh, yeah, that's the is mode a one hit kill <laughs> mode. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, and then there will be more updates coming later on. Uh, and then there's just a couple couple other announcements in there but those are the ones that i wanted to talk about and then also they did have a nice look at kirby and the forgotten land which comes out that March game looks 25th. really cool like the fact that like kirby can it like does. suck a car up and turn into a car <laughs> like mm-hmm. i'm i'm excited for this kirby game i it's been a while since mm-hmm. i played a kirby game uh, at least the epic yarn was the last kirby game i played and i know there's been some since then but I'm kind of looking forward to to this. And it's coming so soon, which is so nice about Nintendo is they kind of just make announcements and follow through with those announcements. Yeah, like the Wii Sports like, being announced like February 10th and coming like six weeks. Like that's And there's a beta this weekend. Okay. Not free beta <laughs> yeah, this weekend. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, I just like the way Nintendo tends to function. Yeah, there's stuff like Bayonetta 3 they didn't talk about. They didn't talk about Breath of the Wild 2. But, but they told fine. us, At like, hey, we're talking they... about games that are coming out in the next yeah. six months. And and they hit that mark. And I think they have a game yeah. every... And, and they have a game, like, yeah. every month, basically, that is interesting. So, good on Nintendo. This is something I would love to still see from, like, Nintendo, and especially Xbox. Xbox needs yeah. one of these so bad with all the studios that they have, and they just 
don't yeah really like they, do they just spoke once a quarter and be like here's the next 90 days of game pass stuff like it's just even something like that like yeah sure you'll find mm-hmm. another surprise announcement of like you know similar to like outriders or whatever but like hey like here's here's confirmed game pass for the next 90 days you know yeah something like that instead of me just being like oh they randomly tweeted eight mm-hmm. games are coming <laughs> you know i that i still miss those announcements yeah, they need from to have a time. better platform of this like yeah they can you know like they 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 get a bunch of stuff on social media because like there's one of those eight games is like oh my god this is great you know or like mm-hmm. oh if you haven't played this yet you should play it and then some other people are like well that's a seven-year-old game yes but if you haven't played it you should play it like that you can't ride that horse forever so yeah and like even though this was like a weird direct because again most of the games were just mostly re-releases ports some crazy stuff that you wouldn't expect to be coming to the switch like just well it's all the squaresoft yeah. like rpgs that are coming to it uh that were announced here uh ton of it's stuff the same thing uh, like i'm getting irritated now because i think i saw that today or the other day that that ninja turtles game that's coming uh that i'm super excited about um they're like oh splinter can play now i go great when is it coming out yeah but splinter can play when is the game coming out <laughs> I think they did oh, put a date on it. Oh, I missed it then, because I've seen a couple things, and I thought I checked uh, on it. But, you know, it's just like, versus Nintendo, that's like, hey, we've got Wii Sports for the Switch. Oh, cool. When is it coming out? Next month. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> awesome. Or, you know, like, here's the DLC for the tracks. Or here's, like, like we didn't know that No Man's Sky was coming, and we didn't know that Portal 1 and 2 were coming, and, and now they're, they're literally going to be here. <laughs> so... I got. I gotta look for the yeah, the date on. Uh, Same thing with the Metroid Dread. It's cool uh, to see but, them continuing to mess with development. Now that we were just talking about, like, do the sales figures, you know, like, a scare Nintendo? Apparently not. Like, they're still like at least supporting it. So. Yeah. This and and they were at like, just just mm-hmm. under three announcements like this will get yeah. them over that hump and get more people engaged. Especially because a lot of people complained that the game was difficult. And I'm, I'm totally joking, but I haven't got, tried it either way. So. <laughs> Yeah. Though, as someone who has put some time in it, an easy mode yeah. sounds kind of great for me. I just want to experience the puzzles <laughs> like, and I... experience the story and see what, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, it's it's fine. Like, it, it, sometimes it... Yeah. Especially when a game's been sitting in my backlog for, like, four or five months now, I just want to put it on easy and then just yeah. knock it out. <laughs> just to and experience then if you find it, that it's so like, like, you get I'm good now... after three or four levels, all right, let me just, let me bump it up again. And then you either get your butt kicked or you do fine. And if you do fine, you just keep going. If you get your butt kicked, you put it back down and keep going. Like, so. Yeah, just 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 find whatever works for you. And for me, since I kind of dropped dread after putting like five six hours into it, I'm willing to play easy. Like I honestly have no idea how right. much time I put into that game. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> it might be like ten hours, but there's a chance it's it even in takes reality because it was difficult. It, like the, from what I'm hearing, but eh, it could be. If yeah, you're struggling yeah, a little but bit, I remember yeah, it was it's fine. Yeah, it was definitely kicking my ass. I'd have to look yeah. at my play times. Um, so I don't believe anything's been delayed. Nothing important, okay. at least. Uh, so Just don't want to insult right. any games. And what we're playing and watching. Um, mine's a little short. I've got some stuff going on at home and some some stuff going on with work. Some more changes at work for me. Um, so I did obviously like I completed Horizon Zero Dawn and I've messed. I started to mess with the Frozen Wilds. I don't know if the story of what's going on in Frozen Wilds is appealing enough to me right now, uh, only because it feels uh, well. First of all, like the 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 extra section, I, th- I think I talked about this, but the extra section is just there, um, and it takes mm-hmm. place before the end uh, the events ending of the main game, which is kind of weird um, to me. Like, and then it's just more of. I don't feel like it's do like I haven't either gotten to the point or got you know and maybe there's a, a, a another story beat in there that once I hit it I'll be like okay cool I'm interested again um like that like like that could or could or couldn't happen um but right now it's just it's it's more horizon with snow <laughs> like so mm-hmm. I'm not it's not it's not grabbing my attention I've been dabbling with destiny right now just doing some things to be ready for next week um like you know a couple people like helping them you know because they're they're coming for Witch Queen or they're coming back and they they want to make sure that they're up to speed, so we've been doing a little bit of that, a little bit of prep stuff. Nothing crazy. I'm not going as crazy as some of my other clan mates with their prep with like all three characters loaded up with bounties. And um, I saw some interesting stats, like a year in review from Destiny today. Um, like it was just showing some lifetime stuff and some stuff since Beyond Light, and you can actually see like 
as much as people criticize me, and it is what it is at this point, but my Destiny playtime is is definitely lessened a lot um, over the over the years, and that could be just because of the the changes to the game, like the commitment to the game isn't necessarily as much as it used to be, which I think is a great thing. You can go super deep into mm-hmm. it and commit to it significantly, but for me, it's like okay, I can jump on here on Tuesday, Wednesday for two, three hours, and then come back next Tuesday or Wednesday and do the same thing again and be fine. Um, you know, and and I've been doing some of the stuff that I want to do. That probably will change with Witch Queen for about a month at the most, I expect. Um, so my plan is, like, I'm not going to pick up Horizon Forbidden West until after I've kind of rode the Witch Queen train out a little bit. So, And I've also, like, kind of just t- been taking a little bit of a break. You know, I did put a significant amount of time into Nobody Saves the World, a significant amount of time into Horizon. Um and and more time right now into Frozen Wilds, and I'm kind of just in this, kind of just taking it easy with games because Witch Queen will takes up some of my time, and some of the stuff they're showing is really cool, and I'm really interested in. So, so the the beat twelve games is kind of on hold for a little bit. Also, there's not much well, happening no, been, right I'm now video game wise too. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't, I I'm actually not even counting Witch Queen, and people are telling me oh, if there's enough, if there's a trophy, if you get new trophies, like it counts. Like I'm not even counting Witch Queen. Like if you, if you, if you ask me if like I, when I mm-hmm. complete the Witch Witch Queen campaign, I'll probably call it like game two point five complete. Like because I don't, you know, you don't ever really mm-hmm. complete Destiny. Like I'm not naive in this thing. Like I play Destiny. Like no, it's like, but I've got plans. Like Dread is afterwards, and Death's Door is still there, and. Yeah, um, and Forbidden West, like, and I think that I could get Dread and, and you know I could get Forbidden West completed, however long it takes me, and then Dread, Metroid Dread, and, and Death's Door would be like boom, boom, you know. So, yeah, especially if you really get into a rhythm with those right. last two so, ones. Hell, there was a, and then like I saw this trailer for like Unbound um, last week, and I put that in the Facebook group mm-hmm. and Discord as well. That looks super interesting. And then I went to that website, like, how long to beat? And it literally said, like, it's like 27 minutes to beat the game. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I was like, 27 minutes? <laughs> I was like, what is that? Because it gave me, like, Ori vibes and stuff, you know? So, mm-hmm. but it looks pretty cool. So. Um, Watching, I watched the Super Bowl. Um, Cool that Matthew Stafford won. It was a, It was a good enough game. Uh, you know, there for a little while, but I could kind of see what was happening. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then like the commercials, like the commercials have just gotten weak. So I think just marketing has changed, like with streaming services and stuff. Now. Yeah, I heard most people were just playing. Uh, which celebrity broke my hearts about NFTs? Because yeah. uh, um, I've heard there's a lot of I, crypto I, and I NFT I thought the halftime show year. was really good. I, I like that's kind of like my age group for that and you know I thought it was really good I hated all the the stuff afterwards about like oh they were supposed to do this and they did this like I don't care I don't want to hear about it um my wife thoroughly enjoyed the halftime show um so uh, I just I thought it was I think it was it was cool that 50 cent was there too as a surprise we didn't know he was going to be there um and I thought maybe we'd see one or two others but we didn't and I was it was it was good like I enjoyed it I like Dre pretending to be mixing live. Yeah, like I, I will that say that I was happy. I, I will say I was happy I that thought. it was not lip synced. Like you could tell it wasn't lip synced. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I know, Mary, yeah, Mary, but it just cracked Mary me J. up Blige when I turned it a on. Bit, you know. Yeah, uh, and then I've been watching. My wife's actually reminded me of it. Like I've been uh, watching Kim's Convenience on Netflix. Uh, yeah, 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 that's so a great show. Having, you know, we're, that's kind of just the the show that we put on when you know we don't want to really watch anything for a couple hours uh you know you can kind of it's the same thing like the 20 20 minute or 25 minute episodes of just one after another after another after another so um that's been good and we've been working on the house you know kind of purging the basement and stuff again just more more things of trying to to get some things under control <laughs> i got a lot of stuff coming up i got nephew's wedding coming up son's wedding coming up college graduation coming up <laughs> it's like <laughs> i got some things going on so you might have to reach out to a guest or two pretty soon because I might be MIA for a little bit, actually, the more <laughs> I think about it. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll figure that out when it happens. If we were watching, uh, like, while we were working in the basement, we were watching tons of Boy Meets World. Just same thing. Put it on, something to have on in the background while you're working on stuff, and just something you don't have to pay attention to, you know, because we've seen it so much. It's a good show. It's a really good show. <laughs> All right, what you got? Uh... Yeah, for me, I'm um, still going through Sifu. Uh, I was basically just going through the trophies. I'm like, is this platinum doable? For me, may- maybe there's one trophy in particular that's going to take way 
too much time for me to perfect the combat to, to accomplish, which is beat the game under 25 years old. That that seems difficult, but there are some trophies that are going to require some grinding, some stuff that I actually just had to look up what they meant because the game does not explain the concept at all with what the trophy's asking. But it at least showed me like, okay, I'm going to have to replay this this game and treat the bosses just a little bit different, which then will hopefully allow me to level up more and then I will be able to accomplish the super difficult beat the game under 25 trophy. So I'm kind of just casually going through that. It's to be getting some Though that is a game too, right? I was reading. I think so. I, there was a pretty large patch and then there was something uh, that they said was coming soon. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I just want to get this done as fast as possible because this is also one of those games where you can't really take breaks from because you're just going to be out of the rhythm of it. Uh, and I need to beat this before I stupidly buy Elden Ring and put time into Elden Ring before quitting because Elden Ring seems more and more like something I'm going to pick up and I don't know if I can balance Elden Ring which is also a game that you need to be in a kind of and rhythm for and need to focus on <laughs> yeah so I, I don't know if I can balance Sifu and Elden Ring at the same time of between my other like video game obligations uh, so still going through Sifu still love the hell out of that game appreciate it more as I level up my character and unlock more moves and just get to see how everything works. And then also seeing where some of the mistakes I made were in terms of like what I focused on unlocking as I get a different move. And I'm just like, Oh, this is game changer too bad. I already beat the game and I'm just, you know, doing cleanup. Uh, I have started uncharted three, about it halfway through uh, my uncharted playthrough uh, for uncharted three I'm actually liking the game better than I remember, but I, uh, everything I remember from Uncharted 3 is I hated the back half of the game, and I'm approaching that, but I'm enjoying the the first half way more than I remember, so not looking forward to getting to the parts of the game I don't like, but still love that franchise, and I do plan to see this through and play all the <laughs> Uncharted games, at least hopefully before the end of March, because... Uh, I'm kind of burning through Uncharted 3 like way faster than I, I was expecting because I think it is longer than uh, 1 and 2, but I'm hitting that point where I'm hitting like the the landmark moments a lot better. You know, like the, the marquee moments, I'm hitting that faster. It helps when you or, have a more basic understanding of the puzzles, I feel like. You're like, okay, like it takes a second to be like, I remember this. Like, you know, like click, 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 click. Yeah, click. well, it's funny though, like how much stuff I actually do mm -hmm. remember. Because, like, Uncharted 3, I, I think I played the game twice. Right. Like, when it first came out, and then once, probably, like, a year after. And just hitting spots where I'm like, oh, I know exactly where this is. Oh, there's a bullshit treasure mm -hmm. over here that's kind of hard to get. I remember where that's at. So, I un I remember Uncharted 3 way more than I remember Uncharted 2. And Uncharted 2 is, like, my favorite yeah. game of the franchise. It's kind of so crazy I don't know how, like, my certain brain's things just have broken. an effect on you and some don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it might be just I struggled in certain parts of Uncharted 3 at the time and probably had to replay them so many times as opposed to Uncharted 2 where I just can breeze right through stuff. Uh, we did get a code for Dying Light 2 on PC. I only dabbled a little bit into that game, though they already have launched like some free DLC for that game as they promised to do over the next like five years. So uh, hoping to spend some serious time with that over the next couple of days, I kind of have the weekend off, so I'm hoping to just get in there. It, since it is on PC, I have to get into like a different mindset <laughs> uh, when I play. Uh, I will use controller, but it's not sitting yeah. on my couch. I'm in an office chair. It's not propped up so, on your elbow, feet up to, on the couch. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm focused, uh, foot away from my screen, so I just got to get into a, a different Stream mindset it. to. <laughs> ah maybe i don't know my pc is definitely getting yeah. kind of old so i'm gonna see how my game can like really run it when I'm i sorry, get into I more dense areas PC setup. Never mind, sorry. yeah uh and then uh another uh game that we got a code for action arcade wrestling uh this is a 90s throwback looking uh wrestling game uh this is on the switch uh it is previously been released on pc xbox and playstation so this is it finally coming to the switch this is a retro style game that is very bare bones in terms of what 
is available to you, uh, but that is kind of going with the vibe of the game. Like when they say arcade in the title, they mm-hmm. mean it to where it's really just a roster of wrestlers and then just different modes you can put them in or different match types. So, you know, one on one uh tag team triple threat battle royale it's a, it's a quarter eater. Uh, it's a quarter eater game you know like <laughs> kind of yeah there there unfortunately there's no like story mode there's no gauntlet mode it's just here's a bunch of mat match types here's a roster of custom made wrestlers uh provided by the developer i think there's 30 and then they also have a tool set uh where people can upload their creations Though there is no tool set in the game, basically the tool set is on the developer's website on PC, so uh, people can get really creative, and the people that have been uploading wrestlers have done a really good job of capturing real-life wrestlers in this art style uh, using the the move set. Uh, there is a ton of effort, you can tell, put into like the animations and a different type of moves, so wrestlers do feel pretty unique from each other. Uh, the the control scheme is pretty simple, but there is a lot of depth to it. Like when you first load up the game, there's like a 30 basically maneuver tutorial, basically where they run you through like here are strikes, here are different type of strikes, here are different type of grapples, and you kind of have to go through it. You can skip it, but it's really well done in terms of like here is everything you can do in this game in like a five minute tutorial. Uh, and it's broken down into like 30 sets basically uh really good way to to get a grasp of everything because they want you to be able to just enjoy having matches because there is no like story or gauntlet mode or anything like that so they just want you to get a grasp of the combat and then enjoy it and most of my enjoyment has come into just going to the created characters and downloading them to see what the communities make and the community's made a bunch of random stuff. I mean, you have your AEW, you have your WWE wrestlers being made by people, but then you also just have like, there's like one or two people that are just really into comic books and they made pretty much every Marvel character you can imagine. And then there's someone making all the DC characters you can imagine. So it's just been fun to just check out what people have been creating and then just throwing as many of those wrestlers into a match as possible, especially, uh, Despite like the way, how the game looks in terms of like it's not like a graphic powerhouse, it holds a steady frame rate on a Switch even when you throw a ton of characters in the rain, which is like That's really awesome, impressive. Yeah. For, so uh, I'm enjoying that. It's one of those things where without that little bit of incentive to play in terms of some something to get me in there in terms of like a story or a federation mode, uh it's just one of those games you kind of just pick up see what characters are available mess with the character and then you kind of just put it away for a little bit but for a 15 dollar game i think that's that that's reasonable you know it's just something to mess with and i think it does have like up to four players local so if you just want to show some wrestling friends and just have random matches of bret hart versus the juggernaut from marvel comics it does that for you so i'm enjoying this i'll be putting more time into it just to see uh, how far I can go technically, because you can throw a lot of wrestlers into the ring at one time. So I'm just interested like, to how, see how many the breaking point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, I just want to see how far I can go because they do tout like, "Hey, we we hit our frame rate consistently." Mm-hmm. So I just want to put that to the test. Uh, so that's it for for playing, watching, still watching the Nana Blu-ray release. That's been kind of our go-to thing every night. Uh, we've kind of hit that point in the show where it's just pure depression. So perfect for Valentine's <laughs> day. Uh, Cause it's just one of those animes. It's just, it just kind of, you get into like episode 30 and then they're like, Oh, for the next 18 episodes, we're going to make you feel like <laughs> shit. And so you just kind of <laughs> uh, just watch that for a while. Uh, and we debate anytime there's like a p- possible happy ending of like, let's just stop here. We don't have to keep going. They just accept this as the canon ending and not continue the show. And then you hit uh, play so next episode and you get hit doing that. <laughs> Basically, like, yeah. To where it's just like sometimes we just look at each other like, oh, it's a shame that the show ended here, but at least it was happy. And then we let the show keep going. And it's like, oh, no. Sadness. Um, so that is pretty much all I've been watching. I did yesterday. I was off from work 
So I did end up watching a lot of Simpsons episodes when I was waiting for Sarah to finish <laughs> with her work <laughs> to where I ended up just loading up a random season. And then I think I ended up watching four hours worth of Simpsons oh <laughs> uh, of the good seasons. Uh, and I, I keep forgetting Disney on where now, right? I the whole seasons or the whole Simpsons stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All 32 seasons yeah. are on Disney plus. Um, I usually stop around season 12 or 13. Uh, and I probably will do that again. If I do continue rewatching Start season 13. Uh, oh, I remember why I stopped Simpsons. now. Click. <laughs> like, <laughs> Basically that that's kind of, it said, I think there are now more bad seasons of the Simpsons than good mm-hmm. seasons of the Simpsons. Cause there's just so many. Yeah. So, the high point, the high point, uh, I'll see how far I go. Would, I, I guess would have been the, I don't remember how old I was, but like the Mr. Burns murder thing, like when they were doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So like late nineties, early two thousands or probably like peak Simpsons. And then like basically whenever that movie came out, which I think was like 2006 Mm -hmm. is probably when like the show completely fell off a cliff. So don't know if I'll get that far, but for now I'll watch some episodes from time to time. All right. Uh, questions and comments. You can send us questions or comments using hashtag Ash digital days, Facebook group, Twitter, uh, there's a Discord thread for it, uh, so you can like Robert Cartwright did a uh, non-gaming question. Do you ever binge watch new TV shows as soon as they are released, and if so, which and was it worth it? Um, the most recent thing that I would say that I have binged, um, other than like we just talked about, like Kim's Convenience, where we, we Angela and I tend to probably watch five or six episodes in a row. Um, I think like um, I probably the last it was would have been like cobra kai like season two or three um that was like the last thing that i probably like watched a significant chunk of it at like one time or in like one day um other than that there really hasn't been anything appealing to me like the first one i guess the first thing that i would say that i've like binged at one point in time was like house of cards but that was like like on mm-hmm. netflix and it was like we're gonna release an entire season in one day you know and like mm-hmm. so that's so yeah, there really hasn't been anything, and I also feel like some of them have just in the last couple of years have gone away from it. Like Disney Plus is not releasing; they're you know they they control Wednesdays now, whether it's Boba Fett or Mandalorian or you know or whatever they control like Wednesday morning, you know, mm-hmm. whether it, WandaVision, all that stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird how they picked Wednesday mm-hmm. to, be, to be Friday go to thing, but it, <laughs> and they changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it used to be yeah. TGIF. Uh, so for me, it depends on the type of show. If it's like a, a drama, I probably prefer to just watch it one episode at a time and like once a week or once a night. Uh, but when it's like a comedy, I, I'll binge comedies. When I watch Kim's Convenience, I think I burned through the first mm-hmm. two seasons within a week. Uh, just because comedies tend to be shorter, so you can justify squeezing in an extra episode. But also, they're not challenging right. you. So like like if it's a really good drama, sometimes you need to step yeah. away and be like. It's okay, also like yeah, like I can't. It's like all right, I'm gonna get up and make make some popcorn. Oh, you want me to pause it? No, it's fine. I'll listen to it in the kitchen. You know, versus a drama like mm-hmm. okay, I gotta go to the bathroom. Like pause it. Like and then I gotta sit down and get resituated yeah. to make sure I don't miss like something in the background or something. You know. Like as much as I would have loved to binge Wandavision. I kind of needed that breather between mm-hmm. episodes to like kind of analyze and put my own pin, uh, like thoughts into what they're going to do next, as opposed to if I just watched WandaVision in right. one day, like some, some shows you just need to take a step away from. So for me, it's like, I just finished the Witcher, like when it came out and it took me like a week and a half, mm-hmm. two weeks to, to watch all the episodes, but we weren't watching more than one episode a night. It was just one episode, walk away, discuss it look up some theories and then move on to the next episode the mm-hmm. next day uh but again comedies i just go yeah. right through them um ali bartle i hope i say your last name right sorry bartle uh what game surprised you the most with how much you enjoyed it maybe it was something outside of your usual genre or was free on game pass slash plus um well the first easy cop out for me is that believe it or not i was not a first person shooter fan uh, um, prior to Destiny, <laughs> and there was a certain point in time in Destiny where it, it grabbed my attention and it, and it and it put its hooks into me and just decided to like leech on and attach to me for the rest of my life. Um, so I was not really into first person shooters that much at that time. Um, and then the other thing that I would say, 
I guess like recently, like I I I I, I checked it out because Drinkbox makes it, but like nobody saves the world was a surprise for me. I knew the writing was going to be good. I knew the art style was going to be good just based on the trailers and 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 Drinkbox's history with um Guacamelee. Uh, but the mm-hmm. I I did enjoy the combat, and when they were like, "Oh, it's a, it's an asymmetrical RPG," I'm like, "Oh, I thought this was gonna be like a Metroidvania," and then I really enjoyed it, and I got hooked into it, and I was like, all of a sudden, I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna upgrade this guy and upgrade this guy." I'm not as good as like as Cordy, in terms of how quickly Cordy was able to like level up some of his characters and stuff, but I really had a a good time with that, and I like I would have bought it either way. I feel like you know, it being on Game Pass was just like it was just convenient. Um, but it's one of those mm-hmm. things where, like, the next thing the drink box makes, I'm playing and buying. Like, just because I enjoy their stuff, so. Yeah, you almost seem like you would probably double dip on some oh, of the I games. Would. Like, like yeah. if they released, like, a collector's yeah. edition or something, you would totally be like, yeah, I'm getting that collector's yeah. edition. Even though you're not that right. big of a if collector. If they do something cool, like, like if, when, when it comes to PlayStation, or the Switch, even, um, if they do something cool with it, like, if there's a... I don't even know, like a nobody plushie. Like, yeah, I'll buy that. Like, yeah, like I had a good time with that game. Yeah. Like, I, I really enjoyed that. And yeah, I got you, like Drinkbox got their Game Pass money, but yeah, like you know, uh, getting it on the Switch or having a case like might be kind of cool. Like, so yeah. Uh, for me, so the two games that stick out the most uh, for me are Red Dead Redemption. I never really liked how rockstar third person games have played and i wasn't a big cowboy fan like westerns were never my thing and it actually took one of my friends on psn back in the day to convince me and other people to buy the game and he never lets us forget that because every time we were playing like kill zone he's like you guys got to pick up red dead for the multiplayer and the story it's gonna be amazing and we're all like no nah, that game doesn't look good to us picked it up loved the single player and then put an unreasonable amount of time into that multiplayer, even though that multiplayer was kind of like bare bones for, for what it was. So red dead was definitely one of those games that I wasn't expecting to enjoy. And then I really got into it. And then the other one that comes to mind, uh, is just overwatch. Like I was really into competitive shooters at a time when I was younger, like high school days. And then I went like a really long time, like five to eight years where I wasn't playing multiplayer games. And then got hooked into overwatch over a beta weekend yeah, you or stopped something. like at Killzone zone two pretty much right like and then yeah yeah like i dabbled in kill zone three and then and that then was nothing just, again that was until it. overwatch i thought of yeah, i thought of another that one up, that's not recent or destiny by the way when you finish i'm sorry so. yeah uh so overwatch is probably one and then i got super into overwatch but i think i've same thing that happened with kills on two i was super into kills on two put thousands of hours into it couldn't find anything since then got into overwatch put thousands of hours into it and i haven't touched a multiplayer game yeah. and you've tried in like three back years for blood or rainbow six yeah. attraction like you're trying to to find that once yeah. a night or once a week or twice two nights a week game that you play yeah. with your buddies and I just and can't. there's just nothing that's sticking right now for you um and that's yeah. the main reason i stick with destiny um the other one for me that was really surprising that i took kind of went out on a limp monster hunter um and like yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, like it's a looter sort of, but it's not, and you can craft some stuff, and and I really enjoyed that. I was playing with some friends, and then I just I kind of stopped, and I don't really know why I stopped. Um, but you know they they kind of had that little gap in content, and I kind of just moved on and just never moved back. But I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, Monster Hunter was for me where I always wanted to get into the franchise because it was always so big on the PSP in Japan, but they'd never had that multiplayer right. experience in the u.s and then world came around and i played the shit out of that but then it was when you you beat the first major boss in that game where you think it's end game and they're like nah -uh." and then it shoots new game plus is kind of where i fell off yeah then the end game goes way up and i was like whoa yeah (laughs) the the time commitment then just like jumped up even more and i think that's when i pulled back towards like oh there's like new plus armor ah shit i gotta kill the same guy six times to hopefully get a fragment like uh i don't know about that (laughs) yeah yeah so all right um that's our show for this week a little bit shorter not too bad um so expect like next week uh that it won't be heavy destiny yet based on when we record 
Um, so, cause I'll, I'll just be kind of getting into Witch Queen then. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to stream Witch Queen or not. Like, it's one of those games where I could really pay attention to chat, I think. But at the same time, like, if this campaign or the story is supposed to be as good as they want it to be, it might be something I want to focus on by myself. Um, but, uh, you know... Uh, Lights a candle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some, you know, some, some, some Destiny Auric. I got these Destiny candles that, you know, like, you know, burn off certain, like, ass, you know, things to help me keep playing. Yeah, no. Uh, I was explaining to my wife like Smelly gained some well. raid things and she's like yeah I know you took the day off I'm like yeah but it's gonna be like multiple hours she's like yep it's not my first rodeo like she was like <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> just points to the the, the Funko Pops <laughs> I know Dave for the record sometimes she feeds that problem so herself so. okay um, but yeah you can follow us on the main account uh for Twitter is at Digital Days Pod. For Michael is at the first MJC. For myself is at Good Dave Hunt. Facebook group, Discord server, are all linked in the show notes for you to check out. Uh, Patreon is there as well. Uh, so so patreon.com slash digital days gaming. Uh, Teesprings is there. T shirts, hoodies. Uh, it might be hoodie weather if you're going to start going outside and going to some stuff. Like, I was looking at like opening day Tiger tickets. And my wife's like, yeah, I don't want to freeze my ass off. I'm good. <laughs> uh, you know, but maybe if you're wearing a hoodie, it won't be as cold. I don't know. Reaching. So uh, check that stuff out. And uh, other than that, that's all I got. Everybody keep moving forward. Don't be a dick. See ya. So you told me just to end it without asking you. I know, and I was I was thrown off. This threw me off completely. See you guys.